All right, well, <clears throat> I would like to start with reading a couple of emails that really super blessed me. I think I alluded to it in one of the other classes, but <clears throat> just had um, several things about them. Uh, one is that they, uh, I'm just going to read two, is that they definitely uh, search the scriptures after class. And I really as a person, as a human being, as Randy Nussbaum, as a minister of Christ, uh, I cannot tell you how much that blesses my heart uh, that, they, that they dig into the Word. And I'm sure there's others of you that did also, but um, the other part that I appreciated was... Um, you know, I mean, the truth is, uh, in our last class, when I was dealing with uh, Elohim, I did not search out the name there when in Genesis 18, when he said, um, my Lord, I think is the word. And it's Adonai, and I kept referring to that as Elohim. Well, in truth, uh, other than the fact that that's not that word, it doesn't change everything that was said about Elohim. And in some of that, I'll, I'll share with you too. Um, <clears throat> but I want to read these, and I want you to just hear the Spirit of Christ, the, the, uh, a, a precious spirit of a Scripture searcher also, a precious Scripture searcher that is just wants to know and, and seeks to hear from the Lord. So, if you will, um, I'm going to go ahead and name you guys, but this one's from Robert. <clears throat> he says, uh, hey brother, I want to send you this email for a couple of reasons. First, just to say thank you so much for everything you've been sharing. Even though I have known the depths of Adam within me in some fashion through the years, the sharings from Esther have shown me much greater depths of the Mordecai and Haman in me. The sharing this evening is so filled with the Holy Spirit in relationship to the, the one who are three. I agree with you so much that that is what Abraham was seeing, or I should say who Abraham was seeing. But I did want to say that I was looking at the Strongs on my Bible app. Yay! <laughs> And it did, it did say that that word was Adonai, not Elohim. I only bring this to your attention because I know that so much of your sharing gets transcribed and sent out as books and such. I just felt like you wouldn't want to say that word was Elohim if it wasn't. I feel like I know your heart and that you wouldn't want to put that out there if it wasn't the right Hebrew word. In my heart, there's no doubt that Abraham was seeing Elohim there. So I almost didn't want to send this email because the Spirit tells me that's true. But I also feel like he will give you another way to say it that would correct that if it needs to be corrected. Much love in him. Sincerely, Robert. My Lord. You know... I mean, I make mistakes all the time, not just in not looking up particular words, but just in life and whatever. And what a blessing to find someone who stands with you, knowing you're wrong, and instead of pointing it out to, to say, well, see, you don't really know so much after all, <laughs> just to stand stand with you. and. It just, it really touched me. And um, also Sharon wrote, Hi Randy, <clears throat> I was looking at my Strongs and they both start the same way and I <laughs> love that. Bible scripture searchers. 
uh, my Strong's Concordance, and it says Adonai, and she points out Hebrews number 136, in Genesis 18, 3, three question mark, lots of Elohim in chapter 17, am I off on this? Love in him. Am I off in this? Love in him. Um, uh, from him, through him, and to him, share it. Um, so, uh, there, what we will find is that many, or, or almost everything that I did share in that class is true. Um, there was another person who contacted me, actually several more, that, who just said by email or something, uh, text, or verbally, Deb was one of them, and said, you know, that I know <clears throat> that because there were three of them, that that is Elohim. That's let us, thank God. And that's true. That was Elohim. There's no question about that. <clears throat> But, and here's the, here's the correction, Abraham did not call him Elohim, he called him Adonai, and he did it with purpose, he did it with meaning, and, and as soon as uh, the information came in from others that, um, it, that it was a different word, of course, I'm like, I gotta know, and... Um, and you would you would probably be shocked at the amount of digging in that I've been doing because because all of these things fit together they fit together um, but I think personally I think it throws people off if you you know misuse the name and you're cheating them out of something really to be found there in relationship to God being called Adonai as the three in one walk up. So, um, I had kind of put it out there that anyone, I think this was Sunday, that anyone that had done any searching, did anyone find an explanation for Abraham using the name Adonai? I did, but I also wanted to share a little more on Elohim. Uh, so, here's what I'm going to do. If anybody did find anything, I'd love to hear it. Um, you know how it is. Iron sharpeneth iron. And, if, and uh, you scripture searchers and people that just want to, you want to know the Lord correctly, uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to share it. If no one really feels comfortable or feels like they got anything, that's fine too. We're just, we're in this together. We're searching the Lord. We want the Lord. We want to hear from the the mind of Christ is in the body. So, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open it up and just say, if you did hear something, and don't you don't have to wait too long. I know everybody's so lamb-like that they're, they're going, okay. Um, but if you do have something, just, just go ahead and jump in. Uh, unmute your mic. If you, want, if you want to do it, you can also um, unhide your video, or you can just do the audio through your mic. Anybody? Go ahead. I uh, searched out the Strong's also yeah. bearing witness to me about the spirit of it was coming from the three and one, but I agree that it uh, did say Adonai, but the only thing, um, Adonai is the plural of Adon, A-D-O-N, and A-D-O-N is one, whereas Adonai is the plural. So to me, that was probably talking about the three and one. Adonai is not <coughs> a single, it's, it's plural. That's what Adonai is a plural word. So, okay. Anyway, that's all. I was excited. Yeah, I, I haven't had the chance to look that up specifically, but I, I did notice and uh, that the word Adon, A-D-O-N, looked like an abbreviation of Adonai, and it was used in quite a few places. Um, I may even mention one, but I think that it's probably a derivative of that and therefore would carry some of the true meaning of, of Adonai because it's, it is, I, from what I've seen, there's some very specific things about it. Okay, anybody else? Next. Thank you, Deb. Uh, I got something small to add to what um, 
was just shared. Okay. Um, so since Adonai is plural, just like Elohim, but it is regularly used with verbs that are singular. Um, so oh. the connotation that comes across um, in the Tanakh is um, they they relate to it as the plural of majesty. Hmm. That's great. That's great. Praise God. Anything else on that uh, from from you, Julie? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you very much. That's really good. It's, uh, that's a blessing. All right. Someone else? Anyone else? Anything? Small, large, doesn't matter. I can maybe put this out there not really knowing yet what its full significance is. But I noticed that the word Elohim was used up until Noah's story, and then it didn't get used again until Genesis 17. Um, it uses Jehovah instead. So it almost felt like, like Elohim was showing back up again. Uh, not that they're different, you know, people or whatever, you know. Right. But it's like he, he was coming back on the scene in that sort of, I don't know, I don't know, like like the one who said, let us make man and had that excitement in his heart was showing up again in chapter 17 and that makes it a little more interesting that that abraham like seriously blew it you know in 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 chapter 17 because i feel like the lord was was opening himself up in a special way that he hadn't really since creation right and and then it was like maybe kind of heartbreaking and, and uh that that um that Abraham sort of blew it, but then Elohim shows up at the beginning of 18, and he calls him Adonai, and I feel like that there's something there. I'm not really sure what. Okay, good. Yeah, I think I could be wrong. You know, I guess what? Uh, probably from now on, <clears throat> when I teach and say something, I'm probably going to be adding, I could be wrong, because I could be wrong. And uh, there's so much of this. There's so much. I mean, I have really searched, but uh, so I know that I don't have a handle on all of it. But anyway, I think that uh, uh, Elohim um, uh, kind of got replaced with Jehovah in chapter 2 of Genesis, and I think it's around verse 4. And uh, I, that wasn't the end of it. I've, Elohim, you know, was, was used. But it, it, I guess I shouldn't have said got replaced. I mean, came into the thing. Because before that, it was just all Elohim. And then in chapter 2, I think, verse 4, somewhere right in there, um, Jehovah came. And uh, Jehovah is one of the names that I really have not had a good, good, good chance to um, really search out. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, I, I agree. And what you said, Lindsay, about um, <clears throat> chapter 17, mm, there's so much there. There's so much there. And, you know, I think you're right about Abraham in that, uh, in that chapter. Randy, this is Carol. Um, I just noticed that when I was looking up Elohim uh, and Adonai in the Strongs, that Elohim is used can be used for gods with a small g, and um, mm -hmm. that in my Strongs it said for Adonai it's used as a proper name of God only. Yes, that's good. That it's like a proper, and I like, I like that it's sort of put that way. It's a, see, we would go to proper name, meaning that would be like calling me Randy or something like that. But I think that built into that proper name thing is, this is the proper name at this time when you use that or not. And I, I like that. Okay, good. Thanks, Carol. Anyone else? Lots of scriptures. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. I didn't do any research. Okay. I didn't do my homework. But um, just 
I just caught the spirit of when somebody said the plural of majesty. Um, like when we think of a king or a queen, we can only think of one at a time. And it really sparked off, you know, in the Song of Solomon, and says, my lover is like a fountain of gardens. I mean, I can imagine a garden, but I can't imagine a fountain of gardens. Mm -hmm. And it just, that word, plural of majesty, like our God is much bigger than what we think. Yeah, so, good. It's just mind when she said that. Thank you. Amen. 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 <clears throat> yeah, I'm hoping I remember all these things that you say because to me they definitely fit in uh, to um, what we what we want to get into. And of course, we're only get it, we're just barely getting into uh, some of the things uh, in this new move of God, if you will. Uh, that took place in Abraham's life. So we're going to get to see a lot of these things. Anyone else? Um, something that was shared earlier just sparked this thought just now, and I don't know if this is right. But um, so you have Abraham in chapter 17, and it manifests very clearly that he's on his own track. Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. He's got his whole thing planned out. He knows the way it should be, and it's not the Lord at all. But when he calls Elohim Adonai, he's back. Like he's back in the flow. The Lord is the Lord to him and not the guy he's coming to with his ideas. So he's going to be in the flow with the Lord. It's not about Ishmael anymore. He's on the Lord's plan for the seed to come forth. You know, something's changed in his heart. Amen. I think something did change right in that area. Amen. Okay, next. Anybody? This is so good. Amen. Well, and, and as usual, we don't have to hear from everyone, just if somebody has something. And these, these are really, really good comments. Um, <clears throat> so, um, I want to, really tonight, I, what I'd like to do <clears throat> is sort of build up around Elohim, more substance of what that relates to. And in doing that, then, and it, which probably wouldn't be tonight, but then we'll get into Adonai and its meaning, and then we can look back over some of the different things um, and see the connection between Adonai and Elohim. Okay, so, um, uh, Let's see, I'm going to have to skip a little bit here. All right, so some of you alluded to some of these things, but I mean, when you start Genesis, in the beginning, God, that's Elohim. That's the guy. Now, we know that from Genesis uh, 1, 26, let us make man in our image after our likeness, but... When, but right off the cuff, when, when you say God, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, when you say God, you're talking about Elohim. You're talking about that name that is expressing three in one. You're talking about that name that is expressing the Trinity, even though you don't, you don't discover that until verse 26. Um, let us make let us make man in our image after our likeness. You don't discover that um, until that that verse, but it it's in the beginning, right at the first. In the beginning, Elohim. Wow. All right. So does that tickle anybody's fancy or stir anybody? Because <clears throat> that's the one that it just starts off, and then from that point on. Um, in Genesis, through all that whole account there, 35 times, I counted every one of them, 35 times, you know, God said this, and it was good, and God said this, and God said this, and all the way through, and it's just amazing uh, that there's so much that the be beginning, the beginning, 
is not just happening with Jesus. It's happening with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as they are known in oneness. As they are in oneness. Meaning, they, are be, they want to be known as to how they relate to one another in oneness. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I wrote, it's used uh, throughout the creation account. Uh, in the Bible, sometimes it will say the Father created. Another time it'll say, well, the Son created. And there's even places where the Spirit, well, you know, the Spirit moved upon the deep. And uh, the, He created. <clears throat> and they're, they are all included in God created. In the beginning, God created. Because it was all three of them. That is declaring that they all did create this, and they all had a part in bringing forth this creation. So what I wanted to do is just go through some scriptures and begin to show this relationship um, from the very beginning. Uh, Genesis uh, 1, 1 through 3. <clears throat> in the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. The face of the waters. And Elohim said, let there be light. And there was light. What are we getting right off the bat? Well, what we're getting is not just a creation story. What we are getting is that, that God in three persons was wanting to make us after that kind, was wanting us to be with him in that kind. When he said it in verse 26, that all of these things and all of this motion and all of this, no no one is taking any credit. It's so them. It's so them. And I, I remember I drew a little chart of that. You know, uh, I'll draw it again. Um, you've seen it many times, though. You know, we have the Father. We have the Son. And then we have the Holy Spirit. And they relate so completely together that um, the, uh, as, as we know, the Father will declare the Son, but the Son will declare the Father, but the Holy Spirit will declare the Son, but the Father will declare the Holy Spirit. In fact, you know, it's like, it's like um, uh, Jesus will declare the Holy Spirit. Um, an example that comes to my mind is when Jesus... Um, is wrapping up his ministry and he's preached and he's done miracles and he's done all of this glorious stuff and then he says I need to go away I need to go down and let the Holy Spirit declare who I really am not me declaring myself okay so that's that's him he's talking about the you know he's talking about the other he's he should do this. And this is not about me declaring myself. And, and so there is this declaring all the time. It is a, it's not the Jesus as the Son. Uh, the works I do are not mine. They're the Father's. And just this, this constant give and take, but never, ever grasping after it or being the taker without being a giver. Now that's huge that's huge uh, to our story second <clears throat> um, Kings 1915 and Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said O Lord Elohim of Israel O Lord Elohim of Israel that dwellest between the cherubim what? What? Who's that? 
Who is that between the cherubim? Who is that? We would say, well, it's God. Well, so much of the time, we only think and God is just this one big supreme being instead of there is no, there is no God, folks, without all three of them. There's not. They, because of the connection of their nature and their spirit that they want to impart and make us in, in, after that image and in their likeness and bring us into uh, certain things because of that, which we're not ready to talk about yet. <clears throat> um, that's the one that everyone was locked out from really knowing. And Jesus went in, and when he went in, he went in and became one, swallowed up of the Father and the Spirit as they were swallowed up at one of another. You know, uh, I just, the Holy Spirit just brought to my remembrance a scripture that talks about, <clears throat> and da 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 da, and then the, king, then the kingdom shall be Jesus's, and then he shall deliver up the kingdom to the Father, and then God shall be all and in all. Whoa, they've got a plan. They've got, see, in the beginning was this, this kind of thing. And when it's all over with, it's all going to be removed from, it's not going to be removed from, but it's going to change in that they will all bring it together so that there is that one spirit, that one nature, that one way, that one mind, that one oneness that we are partakers of. <clears throat> Okay, so then he says, um, where'd I go? Um, sorry. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God Elohim, <clears throat> O Lord Elohim of Israel, art the Elohim, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, and thou hast made heaven and earth. So we're finding, <clears throat> we're finding, and I, this is just a few scriptures, but we're finding all these people for over the ages, everything from the beginning to now Hezekiah to other, we're going to go to Isaiah next, and just the, what we're finding out is when they refer back, or, or when they talk about God, they have that name Elohim in there and then they'll refer back to look this is the beginning here this is this is the one this is the one we want to know you know I mean I remember drawing a, I remember and this may be a little difficult for you to see but I remember the you know here's the beginning in the beginning God and then all of creation and everything comes out from that and then when it's delivered back up all of this will be swallowed up in here and it'll all be back in him okay so instead of just being a christian and saying there's a god uh and then and then Jesus is, you know, he's the, he's the guy that did it all, and he's the one who gets all the... Well, please, the Father, that in him all fullness will dwell. But watch Jesus when he walks the earth. All he talks about is, it's the Father, it's the Father. The, the, you know, the words I speak are not my own, they're the Father's. So don't give me the glory in that sense. But, but yes, in a certain spirit of oneness all of this can be brought together and that's what he wants it happening in us is it all being brought together all right so um isaiah 37 15 through 17 and uh, hezekiah prayed unto the lord saying o lord of hosts Elohim of Israel, I just just think of that. They keep calling him the Elohim of Israel. Now they're using um, Jehovah or Adonai in some of these, but the one continuing word that they use is Elohim. 
So, oh, you know, oh, Lord, um, uh, Elohim. Even uh, thou art, thou art the God, Elohim, even thou alone and of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made the heavens. There it is again. Referring back, this is the one that was before time. Not based on Christianity, not based on the earth, not based on our little lives in the earth. That's all going to disappear into him. Not based on all of that stuff, but based on him who was and is and is to come, but will always be who he was and we've been brought into him, okay? So that he would be all and in all. Um, incline thine ear, O Lord, and hear, o, uh, hear. Open thine eyes, O Lord, and see, and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent the reproach, which hath sent to reproach the living Elohim, the living Elohim, and then I added, who dwells in the Holy of Holies? Because that had already said that, that he's the one that dwells between the, you know. So, <clears throat> now that one is significant because when he's talking about this, O oh Lord, and see and hear all the words of Sennacherib, which is uh, the, the warlord of, uh, of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, then um, this is a bad situation. This is a an unfair situation. This is a situation in which in a right spirit, we need to get in touch with God, with, with Elohim. How are we going to do that? That's one of the areas I want to get into. All right, Ephesians 3, 9. <clears throat> and to make all men see, and to make all men see, and to make all men see, what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Christ Jesus? Okay, so there you have it. Got the creation again. And it, but in this thing, this could, be wor this could be understood two different ways. We could understand this to be saying um, um, that he created all things uh, by Christ, meaning he did it, Christ did it. Or that God created all things so that it would relate directly to union with him. Of him and to him and through him are all things and by him all things consist. Which is probably in here somewhere. I think it's the next one I was going to read. Colossians 1.16 For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or... This is visible or invisible. Elohim has created all these things after their image, and they're showing we, you know, we put all glory to Christ, but He gives it all glory to us. The Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. The Lord said to my Lord, you see, there's a relational thing in this deal. And see, it goes beyond that because the Lord said to my Lord, my Adonai, that spirit. Now, that scripture just came to my mind and it's probably not Elohim because it's actually setting forth something that Elohim wouldn't be setting forth at this time. We're in relationship to my Lord. Anyway, <clears throat> um, 
visible or invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Okay, so who do you think told that to Paul? And Paul wrote it down. And it became Bible. Who do you think said that? Do you think that came from Jesus? Well, okay, Paul, you need to know that uh, by me, all things were created that are in heaven and earth, visible, invisible, thrones, prince, prince, all things were created by me and for me, and I am before all things, and by me all things consist. Do you think, do you think Elohim, do you think the Godhead would, would breathe out that kind of a spirit and I say no I say I say that's getting into the beauty of what chapter 18 of Genesis the beginning part particularly but all of it is really about is really about all right Revelation 4 2 through 3 and then 10 through 11 and immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on that throne. And he that sat was to look upon like jasper and a sard uh, sardine stone, is what mine says, sardis. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in, in sight like an emerald. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worshiped him that liveth. Okay, didn't we read earlier that Elohim is the God that live, liveth? Him that liveth. <clears throat> um, forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are created. They were, are and were created. Okay, so who's this talking about right here? <clears throat> um, well, first of all, it's not talking about the Lamb because he doesn't show up till the next chapter. Yeah, the next chapter. And he'll get his own worship. But this is talking about God in three persons, this is talking about Elohim with, and I'm going to say it like this, I'm trying to give you some clues, with specific emphasis probably on the Father and the Son. I mean, the Father and the Spirit, sorry, sorry, Father and the Spirit. Because the Son is about to be presented as a lamb. All right? Um, and then finally, Revelation 10, 5. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that are therein, and the earth and the things that are therein, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there, that there should be time no longer. All right. So here we go, we're in Revelation 10 and already talking about, okay, Elohim, this, this, created all of it. At different times, the scriptures will point out one or the other. But it's all Elohim. It can be Father, it can be Son, it can be Holy Spirit, but it's all Elohim. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So, so you get down here and it's talking about all, they created all this, they did all this, they did it all. Um, and, and so then it's bringing it down to an end that there should be time no longer. Well, what does that mean? Well, here in my little chart, here is eternity prior to creation, here was creation, and back over here, everything's back in eternity. Well, it's back in God. Well, it's back in Elohim. Well, it's back in oneness. Well, it is all found according to the purpose that Elohim created everything 
to bring about a new creation. All right. Now, <clears throat> one of the things that I uh, really emphasized a lot uh, uh, last week in the class was because I just I felt this overwhelming, and I didn't even I didn't look up the name. It was Adonai, but it is Elohim. It's Adonai in a certain spirit that we'll get into, like I said, probably next week. Um, but it is Elohim that came because the three, he saw the three coming and then said Adonai. Okay. So, um, but one of the things that I was overwhelmed with and, you know, definitely needed corrected. And, and if nobody said anything, thanks, Robert, I, you know, and Sharon, I would look like an idiot forever and ever. But the truth there is that this spirit is to be in us in relationship to my Elohim. My Elohim. You remember me saying that? Because it said my Lord there, but it was that or not. But my Elohim is used way more than my Adonai. Okay? So, and saying that, let me just, I, I'll need your help for another class because I, um, uh, I need you to look up something because I have a question mark in my head and, I, and it must be a different word somehow. <clears throat> but I looked up um, Adonai and Jehovah and Elohim and of course we're most familiar with uh, Jehovah. So which one of those do you think would have the most usage in the Bible. Well, Adonai is used 420 times, and that's not counting the ad, Adon, A-D-O-N, which is the beginning part, and then the last A-I. Um, it's a derivative. Um, it's used 420 times. When I looked up Jehovah and clicked on it, and this is where I need help, it only said that it was used 295 times in the Old Testament. I'm talking about the Old Testament now with these names. Um, I know that can't be true, so somebody please help me because I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, you know, unless, you know, I think Yahweh is a derivative of Jehovah. I think it is. I think that it's un supposed to be understood as that. Um, but if any, if any of you would love to do that, because you're scripture searchers, I would love to hear, hear from you. And then, you know, so I'm, I'm assuming, and that one said there was 295 times of Jehovah, and I'm going, well, because we all know Jehovah long before we ever knew the rest of these. And then, then there's Elohim, and it's, Elohim is, is only used 2,274 times. <laughs> that, if your mouth dropped open, Mine did too. <laughs> and that's when I went, how can I claim to be a scripture searcher and want to know the Lord and never knew that? And that's the, in the beginning, that's the guy. And so it's like, that's it. You know, it's going to take me a lifetime to go through all 2,274 names. But, you know, so I, I have gone through a lot. In fact, I'm, wearing my eyes out on doing it, but it's, I feel the Spirit of God on these things. <clears throat> okay, so we were talking about um, my uh, Elohim. Um, and so, um, <clears throat> let's see, where is that? Okay, so I'm going to just give you some scriptures, not a whole lot. Uh, I could have kept going and I'd didn't. And a lot of times when I want to do a quick search on something like that, I'll go to the Psalms because they'll, they have a, not just in the context of a story, but in use it in a different way. And I always want to check it out there first. So uh, Psalm 3-7 says, Arise, O Lord, save me, O my Elohim. Okay. For thou hast smitten all my enemies upon the cheekbone, the, thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. 
Now this is important that you notice that I'm not trying to emphasize that right now, but that you notice that that in these cries, uh, Elohim is is included in it. Okay. Um, all right. So arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. I looked at that and I went. It's saying it's saying you are. You are, O oh Lord, but you are my Elohim. And I didn't look up every use. It's prob I'm pretty sure that's probably Jehovah. Arise, O oh Jehovah. Save me, O oh my Elohim. You remember how the Spirit of God was just pounding that last week? My, you are my Elohim. And um, um, so let's go to uh, uh, Psalm 5.2. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King, and my Elohim. For unto thee I will pray. My Elohim, see. There is, this is, this, you can't as, cannot as a Christian embrace this being by just calling him God. Because he didn't, he didn't want to know from the beginning. He didn't want us to know from the beginning just a generic name. He wanted us to know that oneness was what he was after because that's their being, because that's how they function, because that's how they think, because that's how they protect one another, because that's Elohim. That's my Elohim. And that's what this guy is doing uh, in the Psalms is he's appealing to the one who he's part of, and that they will protect him. Not just, well, I'm in trouble, and, you know, affliction's rough, so, you know, I'm having this little trial here, God. So, God, since I'm a Christian, do this. Now, I'm not, here, let me say this. I'm not suggesting that you start, in all of your prayers, start calling him Elohim, like when we have church on Sunday or something. Uh, I'm not, uh, here's why. Because somebody will get legalistic about it and then they'll go search all the scriptures and then they'll look down on people that, that uh, well, you didn't use the right word or something like that. I'm suggesting we be one with him and when we pray, we think of him as he is and wants to be known uh, eternally before and after. And in doing that, we better understand, oh gosh, so, so I'm giving so much away already, but, but better understand um, why David and others cried out to Elohim so often. All right. Um, Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my king and my Elohim. See that? And my Elohim, you're my Elohim. I'm in a relationship with you in this way, not just a Christian way, you know. And the Christian way is this, but it's really the Christ life way that brought us in. <clears throat> Psalm um, 13.3 Consider and hear me, O Lord, my Elohim. Notice that even when it's using Lord, and the Lord is probably Jehovah in most of these. O oh, Jehovah, my Elohim. Does that make a difference? Would it make a difference? Should we have ever noticed he used my a lot over one part of the name, over, over and above the other part? It's like, he's not my Jehovah. I mean, that's not what you're hearing so much. You're hearing a lot of my Elohim. O oh, Jehovah my Elohim. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Consider and hear me, O Jehovah, my Elohim, lighten mine eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Okay, so this is uh, Psalm 18, and uh, I'm going to be reading verse 2, 6, 21, 28 through 29, because all of these this whole psalm is just full of 
of uh, the use of Elohim. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, Jehovah, and cried unto my Elohim. I, in my distress, I called upon the Lord, Jehovah, or Je I called upon Jehovah, and I cried unto my Elohim. See, the, if, if the Spirit of God doesn't bear witness to all this in our hearts, it's just another teaching. But the Spirit of God and the Father and the Holy Spirit bear witness to this by their very being and the very entrance of them. In the beginning, my Elohim. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, so I'm going to read that one again. This is uh, Psalm 18:6. <clears throat> In my distress, I called upon Jehovah and cried unto my Elohim. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came. My cry. He didn't say my call to Jehovah. He said my cry to Elohim came before him, even into his ears. Verse uh, 21, of still of Psalm 18, For I have kept the ways of the Lord Jehovah and have not wickedly, wickedly departed from my Elohim. I've kept the ways of Jehovah, but I have not wicked, wickedly departed from the ways of this Godhead that doesn't declare themselves but spends all of their energy declaring someone else, declaring someone else, and, and within the Godhead, within that spirit, within that spirit, within Elohim, others will declare you. Anybody remember anything in, this, in Proverbs or whatever, you know, um, you know, it's a fool that declares himself, or, you know, let, uh, let not a man praise him, his own works. I'm not quoting those just right, but the, it's along those lines that a lot of the Proverbs are, are there. And <clears throat> so um, now verse 28 and 29, still in Psalm 18, for thou wilt light my candle. Woo, baby! <laughs> Lord Elohim and Jehovah, light my candle. <laughs> The Lord Jehovah, my Elohim, will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by Elohim I have leaped over a wall. Well now, what is that saying to us? All right, one more verse in along the Elohim path. Psalm 71, verse 12. <clears throat> O Elohim, be not far from me. O my Elohim, make haste for my help. Hear that? Psalm 71, verse 12. O Elohim, be not far from me. O my Elohim, make haste for my help. Wow. Wow. All right. So... Let me see where I, I apologize. My notes are scrambled all over the place because of this search. What? How long have I been going? Is it an hour, really? Oh, my Lord. Okay, I need to stop. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. I, I'm really trying to keep these shorter. And this tonight, I was, I'm just full of, and I'm only giving you the scriptures and stuff. I'm not really explaining it yet, but I'm pretty sure that next week <clears throat> we will go back to Genesis 18 and we will start through Abraham, through his progression. Um, we will find our way to Adonai, who is some portion of Elohim. So be in prayer. And thank you. I mean this. Thank you for
for the emails. Thank you for the calls. Thank you for being so generous in your spirit toward me. Um, I really don't deserve such kindness. Uh, I just want the Lord. But thank you. Thank you. And thank you tonight for your comments. All of them just praise the Lord. Amen. We're, we're, we're getting on track. Um, if you re-listen to some of the things people said, maybe you can start drawing some of those together too because there's, there's some real important things to be found even in what y'all shared. So let's, let's pray. I'm going to start with oh my Elohim, but don't do it. I don't want to hear it <laughs> until we know what it means. Oh my Elohim, oh, oh my God, or my Lord, in the translate, different translations of that word. You are clearly from the beginning. Your hands are your heart. We're moving from the beginning when no other aspect of you was moving. You were one. You were three. You were marvelous. You were wonderful. And that spirit, that spirit that we have reduced down to call it the spirit of the Lamb is really in truth and I've known it for so many years, is, is more, is more than just the fullness. That's the fullness of Christ giving us that spirit that we might all enter in to the Godhead, to the three in one, in, in spirit, not become God, but be, in spirit have, have you in us your ways, your thoughts, your mind, your heart. And so, if there's any way that you can move so that these scriptures and these things do not fall to the ground but are entreasured into our hearts, in treasured into our beings to be seed for the moving of the Spirit like He did in the very beginning and move in such a way that the rest of the Godhead says together, let there be light. Oh, what a picture. What a, what a glory. What a what a privilege. Help us to see you. We don't ask for ourselves. We don't ask to be something or to know something in ourselves, but that we may know and in knowing become partakers. And you said to ask in Jesus' name. So we ask in his name. My Adonai. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you for being on with me. We'll, we'll get into this more next week. Amen. See you then.